Welcome back to the With Joe Weeby podcast. Okay, so my question for you today, Luke, is, is capitalism a fair game? Well, sorry, I won't dump that all on you. We're unpacking <laughs> <laughs> Naval Ravikant. Thanks. Luke was just absolutely dropping dropping there. Uh, <laughs> okay, so what a, what a funny and interesting one. I'll go back to the notes I was preparing. We talked yesterday about wealth, the, the, the abundant world, status games. Um, all right, so... Markets are innate to human beings is one of the points Naval makes in his How to Get Rich podcast series. Right? What sets us apart is that we can track credits and debits, unlike lions and tigers, of course. So he says, don't criticize the people who play the game. And by that, I think he means markets, uh, business games, capitalism, right? Accruing financial, um, I don't know, well-being and riches. It's worth playing. He says it's worth playing. That's his argument. And people who complain take for granted that the game built their comfortable lifestyle, beds, houses, grocery stores, etc. Um, I so I don't know, that's that's his thought, all right? And I was struck by that. Uh, the don't you know that the game is good to play. Interesting. I don't know. I would probably here lean on someone like Alan Watts a bit, who probably has a different well, a slightly different view that he taught us that we should let people quit the game, that the game is not for everyone. So I think that fits with Naval's philosophy, right? He's saying the game is worth playing. He's not saying everyone should play it. But I don't know. I was trying to think about this and interesting to see if we think that capitalism is a fair game. I think, uh, you know, I think, again, he is a startup culture figure, so I don't want to forget that. And I also want to point out that there is something about the ego that it does hide itself in a higher self, in like very, I don't know, self-aware kind of people. So I don't know if it's very, I don't think it's quite something, I don't think you can conclusively say that capitalism is, is um, fair or that it's the best, it's the best uh, system. I think it is a stage of our evolution. That's how I've always thought of it. Kind of like school. I think the concept of school was a stage in our evolution. It was probably a massive revelation uh, when it began, and it's become outdated. It's kind of my relationship with capitalism without, unfortunately, having this exact picture of what comes next. Because, so, okay, so for one thing, to be, quite, to be a lot more concise, I don't think you can conclusively say that the game is worth playing. I think there's a deep of, a lack of, aware, of awareness on what our game is built on and how much of a deceptive diversion it is from like the creation and exchange of true value. Um, By that I mean, I said this, I said this to someone once, I I said, I think maybe 98 or 99% of our economy is just waste. And I think the person was like, what, how can it be that much? I go, yeah, I think most people are doing stuff that is not actually that incredibly useful and it's all about inflated it's really a lot of inflated situation like for example the economy in my mind works a lot on inefficiency so that someone can get paid to do something um you know like (laughs) the government is notoriously not that efficient which means that there's more work for people to work in the public sector which gets paid for out of taxpayer dollars a lot of people in um, like uh, consult big consultancy firms and stuff like that get paid to do not very much. Again, on like a lot of government seconded contracts. Uh, there's a there's a great book called Bullshit Jobs, which talks about how hard it is to actually get fired from, um, like for being incompetent. <laughs> like you normally get fired for political things uh, or some sort of defiance, not like just being an underperformer. So, like, how many people really underperform based on what they're paid, yet that inefficiency is factored into... So, if you work for a company and, like, 200 people are really not that efficient in their work, that's all priced into the product that that company produces, right? Maybe it takes an extra, I don't know, 200 hours to make that watch or that cup. So, it's factored into the cost. Anyway, so I don't know if, like, this is really, like, this this really that great a system. It's hard to be aware for most people about how it could be like way more efficient. Like most people are just content to sell something, not to like create incredibly deep, amazing value. So I don't know, that's a bit of a deviation from the heart of this question. Like is capitalism, you know, fair? Um, But 
I don't know if... I don't know if the problems... He kind of says the problems come from crony capitalists who are just like deceptive people. And I don't know if you can say that there are just some people who use the system wrong or that the system creates people like that. It's very hard to like decide because I know that power like does corrupt people. So you create this thing where people can become like a Jeff Bezos or... Uh, I'm not going to pick on Jeff Bezos, but like people can become like, I don't know, have so much power and sway. And it's naturally corrupts people because people weren't designed to, you know, operate on those extremes, right? Our psychology, I don't think was meant to operate on those extremes. So it does create this corrupting, you know, potential, right? Mm. It's it's not really someone's conscious, uh, like consciously being going in there to be deceptive, so then you um, contrast it to other forms of uh, systems like, you know, communism, socialism, stuff like that. Well, it's better than them. Because <laughs> you can't seen. really think of it. <laughs> and this yeah. is what I mean. This is the Peter Thiel, right? Failure to imagine an alternative future that so often mm. plagues us. Okay, so like specific examples like the GFC. So much of that comes back to people with the ability to get away with mismanagement of financial assets and you know, whatever subprime mortgages and everything like that. The ability for them to do that and get away with it, like the feedback loop allows them to do it. And mm. what happens in a GFC is suicide rates rise. Right? So there's unemployment rates. Yeah, because yeah. people get, lose their jobs and stuff mm. and a lot of them are so overcome with stress so it's often so you know a lot of the things with capitalism because it makes our system so complex creates it makes it very hard for you to live an ethical life because mm. you are so distant luke from the consequences of like what you do and what you like i don't know like there's a table here and i don't know how this table was made there's this mm. whole supply chain i don't know if there was slavery involved um I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's so hard to check. It's so inefficient to check. I can't check and live like a normal life. So is that just like, um, and so there's this, his point is that it's given us the beds we have and that it's given us the, you know, whatever the comforts of modern life. I thought of it from this lens that if you had a father who, neglected you for your upbringing but just sent you a monthly paycheck to enable you to afford everything you know like food and shelter is that person a good father and i'd say probably not because there's an emotional and and you know there's up uh, there's more to being a good caregiver than creating so-called comfort like in a nutshell um and neglecting like the soul and I, that's what i think our modern society is really it's more obsessed with like this comfort. Like, look, you've got houses, you've got plumbing, you've got whatever, you, you've got uh, annual leave, you know? Look at all you've got. But what's happening under the surface is all this deep lack of like meaning and for, for people don't know how to be happy. People don't know how to find meaning in their lives. People have all these assumptions about what they're meant to be doing that are unfounded. They have this, like the Alan Watts stuff, like you're chasing something despite all this comfort. The experience is ruined. So, you know, I'm, I'm not so kind of, I'm not as like uh, accepting of the game as he is. And, uh, you know, I just think comfort's not enough for a good quality of life. I'm not saying we want to take away the comfort. I'm saying I think the challenge for our society now is to keep evolving. And like, all right, we've fixed this problem. How do we fix these other problems now? That's next. I'm going to pause now because that was me going for a bit. But so, I know it's a lot. It's a dense topic. But do you have raw thoughts or takeaways on that or something you're sitting on? Mm, not, not, nothing in particular. Nothing in particular. More just around I can't imagine another alternative. And, and the other question I have is how most of it seems like from what you're saying is it's related to our human nature, not the system itself. It's how we interact with the system you give the gfc example as a prime example um and that comes back to the taleb idea of having skin in the game for those people well, exactly yeah the, the, when you have no 
you can't say it's an efficient system in that example when they have no skin in the game. They have no negative consequences of doing what they were doing, which created that massive decline yeah. for the most part. Yeah. But um, it's, a, it's a good point. It's good bringing Taleb into that because that's what probably the, the better version of this looks like is people actually have real skin in the game. And when you say like what could be better, I think if people look into what's happening in Web3 and the rise of DAOs and stuff like that and uh, cryptocurrency and like a lot of the these promising solutions for decentralized finance and movements away from central banks and stuff like that, lots of stuff getting super radical here. <laughs> like always appreciate what we do have, yes. Um, of course. I'd love to dig into the. That. Yeah, we won't. We won't have time with the mm. Naval sequence. Maybe somewhere else. But it is um, probably on the constant student channel, to be honest, Luke. Mm. But it is um, there is probably the next stage of evolution to come, and different social systems. I just don't. Yeah, like I've had to come up with an unconventional way of funding my lifestyle now to do what I do. All right, I've kind of got this this limping along like the real estate work and then doing this stuff on the side. And you got people like Joey Diaz, the comedian, and Charles Bukowski, who to really chase their dream, they had to go through starvation, basically. And they've had to consciously just deal with that and go through that road. So, I, you know, I just, I don't know. Like, is that is that just, should that be an acceptable cost? You know, is having a dream actually a luxury in our society or is that something human beings are really entitled to now? You know, have we just settled for making life comfortable as long as you fit in these boxes of a conventional path? But if you're outside that, then you've got to figure that out. And this is the points I'm getting at. Like, there's no point having comfort if you're unfulfilled. So I don't know if everyone really does enjoy the game. So what about the people who, you know, we don't, we're not really making the game, you know, something equitable for them. Yeah, because I don't know, I find I've had to push against most of the default impulses to live a life that makes sense and the default things I'm meant to do. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, <laughs> we'll ca good topic. We'll cap it there. I'd love, I'd love for everyone listening to kind of form their own opinions on that. Anyway, but hopefully good points for stimulation. Now, tomorrow, we're going to start unpacking Naval Ravikant's Four Kinds of Luck and hopefully they'll be useful. We'll see everyone tomorrow.